Deriving the equation of an ellipse from the geometric definition of the ellipse. So here's our picture. And we labeled the foci here, negative C0, C0. There's your point XY, or you can move the point over to here and have it look like this. And so let's come over to here. We let 2A is the sum of the distances from the point x, y on the ellipse to focus one and from the point to focus two. So that was that defining uh, string length that we were talking about in the other videos. So 2a, as was shown in the other videos, is the length of the major axis from here all the way across to here, the major axis which is the long axis. 2a is that length. Thus, a is a distance from the center to a vertice. So if it's 2a all the way across, then it's just going to be a from the center to a vertice. Okay, so across there is a. Let's just draw that a little bit better. A. Okay, so we also know that we can let the foci be located at negative C0 and C0. In fact, C is defined as the distance from the center to the foci. So that's C right there and also over on this side. So the distance from the center to, to a focus point is C. So that's what that says. We let, okay, also 2B is the length of the minor axis. So B is defined so that 2B is the distance all the way across here of the short minor axis. So the distance from the center to a covertice these are the covertice in the short direction, is B. So that's B there. So you can see on this picture that if we move this P point over here to the top, that A is the distance from the foci to the point. So if your points are here, then this is going to be A, and of course A is over there also. But anyway, this is A, this is defined as B, that's defined as C, and you have a right triangle. So, B squared plus C squared equals A squared, the hypotenuse. And we need to rewrite that for purposes coming up. Solve for C squared. C squared is A squared minus B squared. So these, these are the defining relationships of A, B, and C for an ellipse. Um, A is the largest quantity of B and C, because it's the hypotenuse. Okay, now let's go ahead with the derivation of the equation for an ellipse. Now, we're working off the picture that is long in the x direction. So that'll give us one type equation. And similarly, we could have done it in the vertical direction and you get another equation, but they're very similar. And we'll go over that. So the resulting equation will be for an ellipse long in the horizontal x direction. The major axis will be in the x direction. Okay, so we know that the definition of 2a is that it's the string length. It's the length from here to there. So it's D1 plus D2 is the 2A. That's the definition of the ellipse. So putting in what those distances are, getting the distance formula for XY to negative C0 and XY to C0 gives you these two distances. That's D1 
This one's D2. And of course that sum is 2A. All right, then we just simplify it a little bit. Y minus zero becomes Y. Y minus zero becomes Y. That's all that happened on that step. Then we're gonna have to square both sides to solve the, uh, this radical equation here. So what we're gonna have to do is subtract and we subtracted this quantity off of both sides. That moved it from the left side to be subtracted over on the right hand side. That's all that happened on that step. So this quantity right here got moved over to the left side. Okay, then we're gonna square both sides. So the square, go, square root goes away. Now we're gonna square the first term that's 4a squared, 4a squared. Gonna multiply together and double it. 2a times the square root, double it, 4a, and it's negative. So it's negative 4a, square root of this. Then we're gonna square this last term, which is this. Okay, then we're gonna make some moves. We're going to square out this x plus c. That squares out like that. And on this side, we're just going to make one move over here. That's to square out this binomial to get this. And we also canceled out the y squares on that step. The y squares cancel out. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the next step. So, we are here, we're going to take the negative, the 4a squared and subtract it from both sides because I'm trying to isolate this square root so I can square both sides again. So we, we're gonna subtract this over, that goes to here, this one, and we're going to cancel some stuff that gets canceled. The c squared cancel here, and the c squared cancel here. The x squared cancels, the x squared cancels. And we can take this term and add it to both sides. And it becomes, it was negative two c x over there, add two c x to both sides to here, and it becomes four c x. So we get four c x minus four a squared, because this was subtracted over equals that radical. Now we're gonna divide by f negative four. It looks like we just divided by four, okay. So we're gonna divide by four throughout on both sides. That's gonna knock off the fours and we're just gonna get this cx minus a squared. The four over four is one, you're gonna get this. Okay, now from there you're gonna square both sides. Cx squared, c squared, x squared. Multiply it together and double it. Two a squared cx. Square the last, a the fourth. That's the left hand side. Over here, negative a quantity squared is a squared. Square, uh, squaring the square root undoes that and you get this. Okay, we're getting close. Now, it looks like we divide by a squared on both sides. Okay, so what that does is that divides the a squared into every term. It knocks it off of it here. It puts it under here. It knocks it off of the right there and it reduces this, a to the fourth over a squared is a squared. So now you got this here. On this side, the a squared over a squared is one. The x minus c quantity squared is squaring out the binomial to get that, and the y squared is copied down. Okay, on this side, we get to cancel now because negative two cx cancels off of both sides. 
So we're just left with this side and this. So all that happened is that the negative 2cx got added to both sides and canceled it off. So now you're down to this step. Okay, we're really getting close. So now we made a move. C squared and C squared. S coming up here, remember this relationship right there. C squared was A squared minus B squared. And that came from the Pythagorean theorem involving this right triangle. Okay, so C squared became A squared minus B squared. And C squared here became A squared minus B squared. Okay, that's all that happened there. Then what happened uh, looks like an a squared canceled out so things are getting lucky and they're falling into place the a squared looks like it cancels out on both sides so now you're down to here now what we're going to do is divide the a squared into both of these terms so we get one minus b squared over a squared quantity times x squared that's all that happened on that step then we're going to distribute the x squared in. So you get x squared minus b squared over a squared x squared. And this side was left alone. Now the x squareds get knocked off. Here and there. So now you're just left with this and that's all that was done. Now we're going to multiply by negative 1 over b squared on both sides. That's to get rid of the b squared over on this side. So these two b squares get knocked off, and it's negative times negative, so it's positive. Only the a squared remains. So x squared over a squared remains on that side. And here, the negative times the negative distributes in. The b squared gets knocked off to give you a 1. And it hits over to here to give you a negative y squared over b squared. So now you're very close. Now all we have to do is add y squared over b squared to both sides, which moves it over to the left-hand side, and we write it like this. That's the standard form of an ellipse. And this equation is for an ellipse long in the horizontal x direction, because that's the way we formulate it from. A is the distance from the center to the vertice in the long direction, that's the x direction, and b is the distance from the center to the co-vertice in the short direction, the y direction. All right, and similarly, if we had put the picture long in the vertical direction, in the y direction, then the all that math would have came out like this. And what's the difference? Well, the A, which is the, the major, you know, 2A is the defining length, and A is the, the length from distance from the center to the vertice in the long direction. And this time, it lies under the Y. So, this equation is for ellipse long in the Y direction. A is the distance from the center to the vertice in the long direction this time and b is a distance from the center to the co in the short direction, which happens to be the x direction this time. So those were flipped. Notice that a is the big one of b and c. So a always lies under the major axis direction variable, always. See here, a lied under the x, and it was long in the x direction. Here, a lied under the y, and y was the long uh, direction. Okay, b always lies under the minor axis. And you have these defining relationships. If you need them, like if you wanted to find out where the foci were knowing a and b, you'd plug it in here and get the c. And c is a distance from the center to the, each focus point, so you'd be able to find out where the focus were. Now, one more thing about this. All this stuff here, all this manipulating if you, you should really try to follow every step